Hi guys, welcome back to ADSR Machine Tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at doing some drum layering with Machine. I've made this beat using various different hits and layering up some drums. I'll give you a play of it now. So we've got a couple of kick drums stacked up, some claps and snares, hi-hats, some percussion. So we're just going to kind of go through this beat and just discuss the various different ways I've edited these sounds to help them kind of gel together. So Machine's just great for really just getting your drum sounds together. Obviously using the hardware, just very kind of organic. You can just get grooves down and it's a lot of fun. But you've also got a lot of really cool editing tools, transient shaping tools within Machine using the sampler and the transient master and EQs and stuff to just really help kind of gel your sounds together and help you layer some sounds. So I'm going to mute this percussion loop that I've got there playing and kind of just mute all these drums and just discuss the way I've kind of put these sounds together. So started off here, this first kick drum, because I was doing a housey techie beat, I wanted something that was quite boomy. So It's from a waveform recordings pack, which waveform recordings always do really nice samples. Have usually been kind of processed through some outboard analog gear, so I've always got a really nice sound. And the first things I was looking at with this kick drum, getting the kind of low end sorted on this beat, was if I load up this Fab Filter Pro Q. And the reason I've got this up is because we've got an analyzer on here. I don't think we've got an analyzer, a frequency analyzer, in any of the other native instruments or machine plug-in so and this is what I was looking for and his first boomy kick drum was a lot of presence and a lot of energy around here 50 to 60 Hertz so that's taking care of our low end and if we look at the sampler here by going on the pitch envelope page and by default you've just got all your hits on one shot so they're just gonna the sample is gonna play from start to finish regardless. And um, I converted it to ADSR envelope and I've tweaked the attack here. So all that knock, I'll back that off. Because I'm gonna use these other kick drums here that I've laid on top, but they're taking care of that kind of high frequency knock sort of transient element on the kick drum. This is just for the, the low end, so I've backed that attack off. And I've also tweaked around with the release and sustain decay setting. So you might only notice this if you turn it really loud. But if I push all these back up, there's quite a sort of flabby tail on that kick drum. And I really wanted to sharpen that up, especially if we're going to start putting a sub bass in here or a bass line or something. The space in between the kick drum, I want just clean of any low frequency element to sort of put a bass in there. So I kind of tweaked these envelope settings and just took that that kind of decay sort of sharpened it up a little bit on that kick drum. So the next thing to do after that was to get something with a bit more presence and a bit more character and I actually used two kick drums to achieve this process so this first kick in here just got a nice knock to it that's the raw sample I've put a filter on there, just a high pass filter, and I've just swept off all the low frequency up to about three, well, nearly 400 hertz. And added this transient master, one of my favorite tools, really. Transient shaping tools are really good for your drums. So this is, I just boosted the attack on the transient master, so. Turn it off. And now let's hear this with the lower kick drum. About the transit master with it and because this has got quite a, a lot of attack element this first low end kick drum back in the attack of this means that the kind of it's preserved the phase of the kick drum so we're not the attack of the first kick drum or the low end kick drum we haven't really got any attack on it now so we're not going to get any of that sort of attack Sometimes they can phase if you have too much attack on two different kick drums, layering them together, and it can sound a bit funny. So just backing the attack off there is preserved the sort of kind of knock on that second kick drum. And as listening to that kick, I think it's quite nice, quite nice sounding. 
but I just wanted a little bit more character in the kick drum so I've got this third kick drum here I mean it's just a sample really and if you look at the sample it's it's not I thought it was kind of distorted when I loaded it up but we haven't got any saturation on it or anything but it sounds distorted and again low frequency I've just kind of swept all the lows off to about 5 540 hertz so And you can mute it and unmute it. You can see what it brings to that kick drum. So after that, the first thing I wanted to do was get a snare in that just kind of just snapped on the kick drum a little bit. So got this sound here. And it kind of just is one of those sounds that just sort of fits around the kick drum. It sounds quite nice snapping on top. If I just solo this. So it's a snare, it's got like the tonal sort of elements really. And I've EQ'd, I've kind of done, done a bit of a low cut on it as well. And I've tweaked around with the release settings because I remember this sample. If I push this release up, it had this weird kind of tail to it that I really didn't want in the sound. So I just kind of just shortened that release time took care of it and it's got a nice snap to it that snare so and it just kind of gels around that kick drum quite nicely so on top of that I wanted to then start boosting some kind of more high frequency elements in the snare and add some claps to it so another great thing this clap here mute the other sounds It's got a bit of width to it, which is quite nice. It's making the whole beat sound a bit wider without adding any width to this snare. If I started adding width to that snare, I'm spreading the transient and it's just going to sound a bit weird. So, but with this clap, there's not such a sharp transient really. So, the two sounds together it makes the snare sound really wide. And just another clap on there as well. It's adding a bit of tail to, to, to the other two sounds because they're quite sort of short and sharp. And there's not actually any processing here. Although I've loaded up this filter, I don't think I've applied any, any filtering. It didn't really need it. I've just taken that tail off there, I've just shortened the release and I've taken any transient kind of attack out of it. So for too much kind of attack on this clap is going to start clashing with the other two clap and snare sounds. So there was like the kick and kind of snares and clap sort of sorted really. And we've got this clap snare that's just kind of gelling around the kick drum next thing was a hi-hat and I tend to go for something with a bit of an attack to begin with put it in the offbeat and again I've used the envelope, sampler envelopes I thought it was a bit too trashy with all that decay sharpened up the decay transient master again, boosted the attack a little bit just help it cut through the mix a bit more really and I mean I've not mentioned this because I never really felt like there was a need to sort of tune these drums or anything but of course we can in machine the pitch envelope if we want to start kind of tuning our drums up and down especially that low end thump if you wanted to kind of get the kick drum in key with the key of your track you know you could just tune this up or down one or two semitones I find when you start to tune drums more than one or two semitones they tend to lose all the character and you pick a drum sound because you like the tonal qualities and if you start pitching it up and down too much you lose all those tonal qualities so 
I tend to only pitch stuff by one or two semitones. If I have to pitch it any further, then I'll probably look for a different sound. But if you wanted to start tuning your kick drum to the key of your track, then you can just use this tune in here. So we've got this closed hi-hat, that's the transient hi-hat, and then I've got these shakers in here just adding a bit of shuffle. And if you look at these velocities, all about the velocities really with shakers like this, you know, a lot of variation in the velocities. Those sort of sounds, you know, might help to rather than programming them in with the step sequencer and machine, and try playing some of those sort of hi-hats in just live, and then you can quantize the recording afterwards or half quantize it. And that's just giving you that sort of shuffly element to the beat. And then some 16th shakers. Again, velocities. And they're just sitting in between. They can come in and out, really. The beat just adding a bit of energy here and there. And there's the sounds. I mean, it's just about getting sounds together. We can start processing a lot more once we're happy with all our sounds and start maybe applying compression to that group, EQ and stuff a little bit further, just adding some kind of brightness, maybe some exciters on the top end, all of that sort of stuff, distortion, parallel compression. We've got to get the sounds right in the first place and get the sounds gelling together and kind of layer them up quite nicely. So I've loaded up some percussion hits from this Vantage kit, which is one of the groups that comes with one of the machine expansions, I think, and I've just muted out some of the sounds. So. You notice with these kick drums, they lose some of their punch and some of their feel. As soon as you one of these top kind of kind of transient kick drums, as soon as you mute one of these, the beat starts to sound a little bit empty. So they're kind of doing their job. Okay, so. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you found it useful and it's just helped you with some kind of drum layer and techniques for machine. Any questions, please get in touch. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, get yourself subscribed, youtube.com forward slash ADSL Tuts. And also get yourself over to our website, machineskills.com. We've got tons of tutorials on there for Native Instruments Machine covering all different angles. So go and check it out. All right, cheers. Bye.